I want to thank my wife for trying to keep me sane over the last couple of days. I'm very much disappointed that a story about Bernie Sanders has been fabricated, not only by corporate media, but also independent media. It has been a, a, a false story has been peddled by the likes of colleagues who I had I had respect for, and it bothers me very much that they don't question corporate media uh, propaganda. And it's really troubling to me that these people, there's so many people let it slip by them that they just kept, I, I, I feel like I'm the only person that in on the joke, that there's a joke and everybody's going to go, ha ha, psych, we just play it. We just play it. We do that. We do that. We knew that Associated Press put that, they made that title up of that article. They just trying to drive a wedge between the left. Like, we just joking. We ain't buy it. We ain't fall for it, Tim Black. And I'm waiting. I've been waiting, guys, for this punchline. I've been waiting for them to say, Tim, we just joking, man. We didn't mean that. I, I did a long-form video about it. I explained what people got wrong. I explained what Bernie was talking about was uh, he said we'd be irresponsible if we sat on our hands and we just because we don't like Joe Biden that we sat on our hands and did nothing. Didn't say vote. He didn't say vote for Biden. It was never, you need to vote for Biden, was never written in the article at all. But here's the deal, guys. David Sirota is a speechwriter and a longtime friend of Bernie Sanders, and he recently put out uh, a, I don't know what this is. He put out a lot of information, Johnson, where he talked about what he thinks sunk the Bernie Sanders campaign and where it made some moves he didn't think were good moves and some of the things that they were up against and um it's very interesting. So I want to share that with you because David Sirota is on the, was on the inside of the campaign. Like I stated, David Sirota is a close friend of Bernie Sanders for at least 20 years. And I say that, 20 years, Johnson. So they have a very deep, fond relationship. You don't work with somebody for 20 years and don't have a bond with them. So I'm sure of that. I'm positive. And, we're, and David Sirota is what you would consider a senior advisor on the Bernie Sanders 2020 campaign. So what he says carries weight, as does what Nina Turner says. She recently did an interview. But right now, let's focus on David Sirota. David Sirota, Democrats' party's tyranny of decorum helped sink Bernie. This was, a, this was when <laughs> you can find this article in thesetimes.com, Okay. And it stands right here. Look, I've known Bernie Sanders for 21 years. He's been a hero for me. I deeply respect his life's work. He remains an inspiration to me. And no amount of post-election gossip, punditry, or backbiting will change that. Okay? So I love the way he starts this off. The only problem with the way that David starts this off is we know what happens after this, right? What usually happens after you say something nice about somebody? We say something horrible. Yeah, that's exactly what usually happens. So let's see what David Sirota says. If you read the autopsies of the Bernie 2020 campaign in the New York Times, Huffington Post, Wall Street Journal, Politico, BuzzFeed, or CNN, you probably read a version of a story that goes something like this. Poster Ben Tolchin, co chair Nina Turner, and I were fire-breathing monsters, aggressively pushing Bernie to attack Joe Biden. Bernie refused to do it, and that's why Bernie lost. He said there's some nuggets of truth there, but there's also some fiction. So it's worth separating the facts from the fantasy in order to understand a huge but little discussed problem plaguing the Democratic Party. They call it the tyranny of decorum. So then David goes on to, to describe for us what has been come, the, become the environment of politics, uh, how uh, everything's about being civil. People must treat each other well and nice. You know how it is. If, if you argue with a person in an establishment, what do they do? They call you a Russian bot. They call you a Trump supporter. You can't even disagree with them on basis of policy or opinion. Your opinion on policy can get you called a bot. They actually say, well, good, good luck with Vladimir. Just for merely pushing back and having a disagreement with them. So we all know this to be true if you spend any time online in any comment sections. Uh, if you ever have an interaction. I'm still blocked by Nera Tan and um, several others. What's the lady from the, the Blaze or the, the Blade? I don't know where she's from. I, don't, I forget her name. I've been blocked by people for like four or five years. We've been blocked forever. Okay? Just because I disagreed with them back in 2015. Uh and he goes on to point out some distinctions between 
Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden. He says, while Bernie was fighting to stop the Iraq war, Biden helped the GOP pass the Iraq war resolution. And he voted down Democratic amendments to that resolution. While Bernie was fighting to stop the bankruptcy bill, Biden helped the GOP pass a legislation that could now crush hundreds of thousands of Americans during a coronavirus recession. So he goes on the list of a few of these instances, a few of these very stark distinctions between Bernie and between Joe Biden. He says, we didn't push Bernie to attack Biden in some sort of vicious way. We pushed him to instead simply and very explicitly cast the primary as a choice between a vision of progressive change and Biden's promise to donors that nothing will fundamentally change. And, you know, I, I remember uh, Nina Turner making these types of comments that, you know, well, this guy says nothing will change. Nothing will fundamentally change. I remember a, a famous rant by Nina Turner where she says, if nothing changes for Wall Street, nothing changes for Big Mama. And nothing changes for the banks and nothing changes for the people to live, you know, in the streets. Our homeless, our vets, our kids living near the poverty line. Now, I'm, I'm, par- I'm paraphrasing. But that was a great riff she went on, and that's sort of, the, I guess, the spirit. I'm getting from the article that David Sirota wanted uh, Bernie Sanders to tack, I should say, that, that Nina Turner and David Sirota wanted Bernie to take and stay in that groove. At other times, though, the campaign backed off, did not seize opportunities uh, to c- continually spell out big differences between the candidates. He says, ultimately, Biden was able to avoid having to constantly try to explain his offensive record Instead, he was allowed to depict himself as a safe, electable unity candidate. Unity candidate. He said, it was not fun to always be one of the people pushing the campaign to be more aggressive and also eating shit on Twitter. And yes, he said eating shit on Twitter. For supposedly being toxic or simply tweeting a few videos of Biden pushing some grotesquely retrograde policy. And I defended him when, when I, I saw him getting attacked for, stay, for stating truth. I mean, he wasn't calling people, you know, MFs and go to hell and, you know, suck something and eat something and call them cowards and scumbags. And, you know, he didn't go as far as some people go, but he was, he was making very pointed comments about Joe Biden. What I think is very interesting, guys, and I know some of you don't want to hear it, but I got to tell you. There's a part of the article, if you hear nothing else, because you heard all that before. If you've been online, if you pay, you know, if you've been, you know, in the loop on this stuff, you may have already heard that stuff. But this is what you have not heard. Okay? This I can guarantee you, you have not been hearing. And it's this. David goes on to say, a thing that may or may not be true. Winning. This was my point. Okay? He says. Would we have won had we consistently contrasted with Biden? If we're going to play coulda, woulda, shoulda, I'd love to say yes. However, I can't say that with I can't say that with confidence, with total confidence, because there are so many variables, and because Biden was an extremely powerful primary candidate, even if he may not seem, even though he may not have seemed that way to the average onlooker. And then David said some things I never even considered. David said, in the last 65 years, no current or immediate past vice president has ever mounted a serious run for president and not secured his party's nomination. Let me say that again for the people in the cheap seats. He said in the last 65 years, no former vice president has ever failed to secure the nomination when they ran for president. That's a stat for your ass, isn't it? I wonder when David Sirota was talking to some other people about this stuff and expressing his uh, his frustrations with trying to get the campaign to be a little bit more aggressive, so to speak. I wonder why they never mentioned that fact. I think it's important to mention both facts. Look, guys, I've never been opposed to us having conversations about Bernie should hit harder. What I failed to see from so many people was the other side of that, which was, how you know that's going to work? And don't you realize he will also lose votes from doing that? And don't you realize we have a media who, as soon as Bernie does that, won't do what they did with Trump? See, here's the thing people don't get. 
Most of the media, MSNBC, CNN, CBS, ABC, when Donald Trump was punching the hell out of Jeb Bush, of course they ran it. Why? Because they they don't like Jeb Bush. Right? <clears throat> right? And it's Republicans. They love to see Republicans beat up each other, right? Here's the thing. I don't think if Bernie was destroying Joe Biden day in and day out, like Davis and Rhoda pointed out here, that they would have been running it as much. Now, I think they would have ran it less. And when they did run it, they'd say how toxic and dirty and low blow Bernie was throwing. Which would have hurt him more. He wouldn't have won Iowa. He wouldn't have won New Hampshire. He wouldn't have won Nevada. See, these are, this is the way I looked at it. I looked at it like you don't really know, but there are pros and cons both ways. And for the love of God, for the love of God, consider both sides. But we have people that never considered both sides at all. I think it's a lot of viewership in it for people. I think it's a lot of money to be made and a lot of anger people had pinned up because they wanted their candidate to win. They wanted their candidate to be the last candidate standing. And they blamed Bernie for that not happening. He said, if you read this far, I know that you're wondering what explains Bernie's resistance to more sharply contrasting Joe Biden. Another point here, guys, that these people never speak about when they bash the Bernie 2020 campaign. They never speak about this. He said, Bernie is a deeply principled lawmaker, but he's not a scorched earth politician. It never has been. David Sirota has known Bernie for 20 years. Remember that. 21 years. He says it's not Bernie's style. It's never been Bernie's style. He's never camp. He's never run a race where he was scorched earth, where he was making negative or bad ads or, you know, those type of ads that take people down. He never did that. That's never the campaign he's ever run. You wanted him to be somebody he, that he is not. And as though, it, and, and, and maybe some people, you know, want that for good reasons. But we are who we are. He says, since he was first elected to public office, his approach is one that seems defined by a belief that making real change from the outside, you must push hard, but always maintain one foot inside the power structure and not try to burn it all the way down. That calculation is that if you are too adver adversarial, you will be instantly marginalized, depicted as irrelevant and disempowered. So he goes on, to, he keeps talking, it's a great article. David Sirota, my hat is off to you, sir. My hat's almost always off these days. I don't wear my hats that often. People say, Tim, you don't have your gravitas when you wear your hat um, on your show. I'm going to start wearing my hats again. But David Sirota lays out. It's, what, it, what I like about the article, guys, is he lays out fair, his fair critique. That's all I want is fairness. Can we have nuance? When you read an article written by corporate media saying what Bernie said, if there's no tape and no audio for you to hear, can you be discerning? Yes, you could. If it was you and someone wrote an article about you saying, you said this, and they don't even have the whole quote, they take a word and put quotations around it and insert it in another sentence, how dare you read that to your audience and not include the full context? And if they can't provide full context, maybe you don't need to report on it. But I would like to submit maybe, just maybe, guys, we can look at this for what it was. An uphill battle. An unlikely, unlikely uphill battle that is still on because I don't know, with all the hoopla and all of the yipping and the yapping and the chipping and the chapping about an article written by the Associated Press, a bogus propaganda field smear campaign article that my friends decided to repeat verbatim in line like fucking robots. 
One thing is missing from their reporting is that Bernie said, I'm still, I'm still trying to get as many delegates as possible. If He would appreciate it if you still voted for him. His name is still on the ballot. And I think that would have been a great title for the article. The article should have been, Bernie's still in it. Bernie said, please vote for me. Bernie said, I'm still fighting for Medicare for all. All of that was in the article. And that we should continue to push Joe Biden to the left. None of that was reported by my friends. All they reported is the title of the article and the first line that said, that Associated Press said, Bernie said. Instead of what Bernie actually said. So, ladies and gentlemen, what we have here is a failure to communicate. It's going to be a long time, guys, a long time before I have respect for those who don't respect this movement enough to give it due diligence. But I thank David Sirota for putting this context. And I thank Senator Nina Turner for her, past, her passion and strength. And with that, we'll move on to the next story.